Hello again everybody, hope you're all doing well. So today I wanted to talk a little bit about carburetors. So here's the scenario. You've just put a big bore kit on your bike or scooter. You obviously know that you will need to increase the amount of fuel going into that uh, larger cylinder in order to increase the power. And that fuel is a mixture of obviously petrol and air. Now, as we know, the first thing we need to do is to increase the size of the jets in the carburetor because that's going to give us the more fuel. But what we're going to talk about today is the air side of things. So how do you increase the amount of air going through? Well, the most obvious solution is a larger carburetor. But is it? And that's the question we're going to be answering. Because <clears throat> logically, yes, you're putting a larger cylinder and piston on the bike. You've got, say, Let's, for the sake of example, uh, take a 50cc two-stroke engine and you've just put a 70cc kit on. So you've increased the capacity by 40%, basically. So obviously, yeah, you're going to need more air and fuel to fill up that extra 20cc of capacity. So, yeah, a larger carburetor does make some degree of sense because, obviously how much air flows through is dictated by the size of the carburetor. So if you've got 17.5, that's the size of the opening, that's how much, or rather, that dictates how much air can go through. But is that necessarily the case? Do you actually have to go to a bigger carburetor in order to get extra air that's needed for the cylinder? The short answer is no. Uh, even as a lot of people online um, and in various other places will say that no, obviously you need bigger because bigger is better and because bigger will flow more air. Whilst this is true, there's other things to consider. Now, this is a tiny bit complicated, but not too bad. And I've tried to simplify it as much as possible. So we're sticking with the example of a 50cc going to a 70cc. And so I've put a number of size carburetors here, which are quite commonly fitted to these kind of setups. Uh, you've got 12 millimeter, which is the smallest usually found on um, factory 50cc two strokes. 17.5, which is another common factory fitted carburetor on a standard 50cc. We've then got the 19 mil, which is probably one of the more or most common uh, larger carburetors that will be fitted to a 70cc big bore kit or sometimes even a 50cc cylinder and then we've got a 21mm which is like the biggest or I know some people go bigger but really uh, that's the biggest I would say would be sensible. So which one of these do you actually choose? Well, the first thing you need to obviously look at is what size your stock carburetor is. So you need to measure your carburetor or, or have a look and see if you can determine what size it is, um, because that will determine whether you need to change anything at all. The next thing to consider is that the size of the opening on the carburetor, whilst it does have an effect on the amount, the maximum amount of air that it can flow through it, it also has an effect on the rate of flow. So a smaller opening is going to have a faster rate of flow and this is going to actually increase your responsiveness of the throttle at lower rpms so um think of it like piston and cylinder are an air pump right they are sucking air through the carburetor into the chamber now the larger the piston cylinder the harder they're going to be sucking so a 70 cc let's imagine you've got a 17.5 mil carburetor 50 cc will suck air through at a given rate a 70 cc because it's bigger will suck harder and actually it will suck more air so a 17.5 mil carburetor will flow more air with a larger piston and cylinder so actually this can supply the amount of air required because it sucks harder and faster through the given opening and so you end up with enough air if however you are too small so you've got a 12 millimeter it will still work. So again, because the piston and cylinder are sucking harder, it will flow more air than it did with the original piston and cylinder. So you're always going to get an increase in air intake from, from the standard carburetor with a big bore kit. However, if your opening is too small, it's obviously going to restrict that. So whilst you may get really good performance at low to maybe lower middle RPMs, after that, you'll start to feel the restriction because at a certain throttle opening, it just can't get enough air through. Uh, 
with your stand, let's say, for example, your standard coverage is 17.5, actually, this, a 17.5 on a 70cc cylinder, can be really, uh, can be optimal, actually, for uh, road tuning, which I'll get onto in a second, um, because it's got a slightly bigger opening, so you're still getting quite a fast flow of air because it's a smaller opening than say a 21 or a 19 so you're getting a nice fast flow of air which is filling up the cylinder nice and quickly which is giving you a fast response uh, but because it's just that little bit bigger than the 12 mil you are also getting that bit of top end as well which is nice you're not going to get your full top end that the kit is potentially capable of uh, but you are going to get close to it so once you start going to a bigger carburetor, let's take the 19 for example, this is where things start to slow down a bit. So what's going to happen is because we've got a bigger opening at the higher RPMs at the top end, you are going to gain a bit because the carburetor is able to flow more air at those higher speeds. But because it's a larger opening, it's going to be flowing air slower at the lower RPMs. And so that will slightly, just slightly, uh, reduce your acceleration at lower RPMs. So um, how noticeable it is really depends on your setup and everything else, but that's just something to bear in mind. The bigger you go effectively, the more air you're gonna flow at higher RPMs, but the less you're gonna flow at lower RPMs. So then if we go to our 21 millimeter carburetor, this, this is getting to the point where I personally think it's too big, especially for road use for 50, uh, 50 to 70 cc. So at this point, you've got a massive opening. So at high RPMs, you're getting the maximum airflow through, but at low RPMs, the air is actually flowing too slowly. And what can actually happen if your carburetor is too big and the air is flowing too slowly, at the lower RPMs, it can actually not give enough air into the cylinder um, to run effectively at those lower speeds, so it can really hurt performance. And this is why you'll see um, a lot of like the really old cars, like maybe some of the carbureted V8s and stuff in America, you get these guys with massive carburetors on their uh, engines going, oh yeah, mate, my, my car is absolutely rapid. It takes a long time to wind up, but when she gets going, she gets going. Well, yeah, I mean, that's great. But the thing is, is by the time you get going, everyone else is already gone. Uh, and it's just because your carburetor is actually too big for the setup. And so at those lower RPMs, you're not getting enough air into the engine to actually wind it up. And so effectively you end up with like, it's like putting a massive turbo on a car. You end up with that massive lag before the power actually kicks in. So, what you're looking for is effectively the um, the best possible compromise between the lower, the smaller and lower, uh, uh, sorry, the, sl uh, the smaller carburetors with the good low end response and the large carburetors with good high end response. You want to go somewhere in the middle. And a lot of the times, especially if you've got like on a 50cc, a 17.5 mil carb, that might actually potentially be your ideal. 19 is the next best thing so a lot of people have a lot of uh, you know good things to say about the 19 mils but it really depends on what you're going for the biggest mistake a lot of people make is that uh, they tune their bikes or scooters for racing um so they go for the biggest possible carburetor so that at the high rpms they get maximum top speed maximum everything else um but the problem with that is they're tuning it for race, but then they're using it on the road. Now you've got to you've got to look at the different situations there because on a racetrack, the acceleration doesn't matter too much because once you once you get off the line and you accelerate off and you start going, once you're going, you never slow down below a certain point. So unless you're pulling into the pits or you're stopping at the end of the race, you don't actually care about that initial acceleration from naught to whatever because you spend most of the time moving you're going around the the track or whatever you're never slowing down below a certain point you're slowing down for the corners yes but you're not slowing down to a stop so that initial acceleration is irrelevant so you go for a bigger carburetor because you want the all that power at the high rpms on the road you want the complete opposite because you're going around villages you have to slow down for traffic lights you have to slow down for traffic everything else stop starting all that kind of stuff so far more important for you know street builds is actually the initial acceleration so when you're looking to increase power a lot of the times especially on small scooters like 50s and stuff you know you're never going to get a top massive, huge top speed out of it so actually what you're tuning for is just better acceleration and so actually the smaller carburetors are going to be your better option a lot of the time as i say if 
standard was a 17.5, that will actually be pretty optimal. Um, you know, going up to a 19, maybe, but it, it, it really depends on your setup, like I say. So that's but that's the basics of it. That's that's what you've got to look at when you're when you're deciding which size carburetor to go for. Don't just fall for that whole thing of bigger is better because as I've just explained, it is better depending on what you're tuning for. If you're tuning for race, yes, bigger is better. If you're tuning for good response and stuff like that on the road, actually slightly smaller is better. So you just have to take into account what you're actually going to be using the bike for uh, and pick the carburetor according to that not just according to top speed runs so there you go guys hopefully i managed to explain that in a relatively simple way i know sometimes i can be a little bit uh, uh sometimes when i explain things i end up overcomplicating them if anything but hopefully that was useful to you uh, if you did enjoy this little video please do give it a like uh, if you haven't already you do subscribe to the channel go check out other, the other videos i've made i've done uh, actually i did a review of the kit that's gone onto this bike uh, quite recently got those videos of ruby over there and all sorts of weird and wonderful things uh for now guys i'll catch you again soon